17th of January, 2003, North London. A wet winter's day. I hear children playing in the garden next to mine. Soap bubbles float through the air. She is beautiful that evening. We hold each other close until the sun goes down. Her smell intoxicates me. Out of nowhere, she makes an excuse and leaves. I sense that she is afraid of something, but she is not willing to talk. I get impatient. I don't even know I'm screaming. The sound is around me now, resonating still, like the hum from the beginning of the universe. When I come to my senses, she is gone. Have you heard of the quantum suicide experiment? A physicist sits in a chair with a gun pointing at his head, and the gun is attached to a machine that measures the spin of a quantum particle. Each time the trigger is pulled, a measurement is taken. And depending on this measurement, the gun either fires or it doesn't. If the particle spins clockwise, the gun will fire. Whereas if it spins counterclockwise, it won't. But from the living physicist's point of view, there's only ever a click. And the gun never goes off. So why quantum suicide? What, what do you mean? If the physicist never dies, it's not suicide. Because every time the experiment is run, the universe splits off into two. One in which the physicist dies, and the other where he lives. From that living physicist's point of view, there's only ever a click. But in all the other universes, there's a dead body. Do you want to use this session to talk about work? Did I say this was work? Do you want to talk about this subject now? Well, I thought you'd find it interesting. As long as you find it helpful. I don't find it helpful at all. So should we change the subject? Do you honestly give a shit? Honestly, I think you'd be better off addressing the issues that are causing you problems. Do I detect a little tension in the air, Dr. David? Increasingly, you're undermining the constructiveness of your sessions with me, and that's going to hold back your progress. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe, uh, maybe I should strive to be a better patient, shouldn't I? Perhaps a bit more like a Rene. Actually, uh, I was thinking earlier, why do I come here? Maybe finding that out is the reason you're here. <laughs> Dr. David, always balancing the truth with the absurd. I think you would have made a very good physicist. Tell me, how do you feel about coming here? I won't take it personally. That's the problem with this. That is why this doesn't work. Every time I come here, and it's the same thing. It's, it's one way. How, how is that going to help me? Just, I'd like to hear you talking about It's not you. my job to talk about me. Well, what is your job then? One down, 14 to go? You know what? You're right. You're right. This whole thing is a farce. It's a waste of time. You know what we should tell people with your condition? There's nothing wrong with you. Do you get it? There's nothing wrong with you. Take a look around you. War, famine, disease, poverty, death. Of course you're fucking depressed. Happiness with everything that's going on now, that's an irrational frame of mind. So my job, essentially, since you asked, is to go around encouraging people to be irrational by being happy. <laughs> How long have you been storing that up? Sorry.
Hallo? It's Erika. Erika Maura? I'm Renee's sister. I know. Come in. You're going to stay? You know this is where he is. Yes. How long are you planning on staying? I'm not sure. A month? Six weeks? Don't know how long these things take. Guess I'm gonna have to go through everything and see if there's anything I want to keep. It won't take a month. I don't know. I don't know how hard it's gonna be to let go of things. You want me to stay? No. June 3rd, 2005. Our new house. Smell of fresh paint. The dark red on her lips. Last chance. April 15th, 1990. Bright blue tree blossom, like snowflakes. H's gentle touch. October 19th, 1991, autumn. Warm inside father's caravan. Run outside, tell her everything. July 7th, 1987, hot summer. Jumping in the river with E, catching fish in our young hands. Stop the cunt. This is Dr. David Wright. Sorry, I can't take a call, but I haven't got what you're looking for. So I've been listening to your emotional fuck ups now for 10 years. Ten years of listening to you wallow in your own self-pity, and you know what? Hello? Hello? Is someone there? God. Sorry, hello. Uh, is that Dr. Wright's office? Dr. Wright speaking, yeah. Oh, I, I wasn't expecting a... Well, I thought I'd get the answer phone, but... Uh, who was that? Who? What do you mean? Well, um... I've just arrived in England to sort out my brother's thing. Oh, right. I thought, um, if, if we could talk about René, you know, is that possible, or is it against some rule, or rather? Uh, um, I don't know. What? I'm not sure, I'm, I don't know. How about tonight? I wasn't planning on hanging around. Okay, um, 
So I should just call tomorrow then. Yeah. Okay then. Um, thank you. Bye. Sorry. Hello. Hang on. Hello? I'm sorry. I don't know how to talk about this. I can't believe it yet. And when I hear myself, it's like a dream. Well, it's normal, I guess. I just want to know why René... History of low self-worth, depression. One of the symptoms of bipolar disorder is dramatic mood I've read the fact sheets, but... Most people with depression don't kill themselves. I want to understand what René was feeling that made the difference. Hold on. Do you know what this is? I found it amongst his papers. Um, looks like a list of experiences, memories. That so wasn't part of his therapy. Did René ever talk to you about the abuse? The abuse? Your father sexually abused him till he was 13. I gotta go. Sorry. Thank you again for meeting with me. Erica. Erica. Wait a minute. Daniel lies. Well, maybe your father does too. Do you know my father like I do? Do you know René like I do? Hector Wright, this is incredibly unprofessional. Yes, it is. It is completely unfucking professional. Drink. Does that matter? What? That I never had the chance to say goodbye. <laughs> Why the fuck does that matter? He's dead. He's gone. Saying goodbye isn't going to change anything. I really wish I had. It's ridiculous. Maybe not. It's human instinct to say hello, we say goodbye. That trivial? Maybe, maybe it is. Since he moved to London, I hardly spoke to him. None of us did. Well, he just didn't really know how to be around people. But underneath everything, he was, he was a good bloke. He was a man of integrity. Shall I put him? Hmm? I've got to do something with what's left. You hear me? I know a place. I'll show you. There was a river near where we lived so hot that day. My mum was sitting at the dining room table, drinking tea and sweating. I thought it was tears. Me and my brother were arguing over the TV channel, so she made us go out. So we went to this river. And there was a place where there was like this waterfall, like this man-made thing. We would just sit under the water and play and catch little silver fish in our hands and laughing, just laughing and laughing. <laughs> and just for a moment, that one moment, nothing moved.
My brother went back to the house to get some things to play with in the water. I waited until the shadows of the trees spread across the river and the coldness of the water began to hurt. I climbed out, I was shivering, trembling really. My teeth were chattering, I couldn't stop it. So I went back to the house. The long shadow seemed to be covering everything. And inside, the house was quiet, so quiet. I found him in his room with a spiral thing. You know, the toy where you put a pen in the hole and you make these patterns. I asked him what happened. He was so quiet. He just said nothing. So I went downstairs and made myself a drink. Evan, <clears throat> Christ. I'm leaving. Listen, I'm sorry. I like you, Dr. Wright. This was never going to work. It's okay. I've never been so happy in all my life. And I know why. Helen? I want to thank you. Well, I'm not sure what for. For killing me. A bad me. You really don't know how clever you are, do you? Look, I think we need to talk about this. Another time. Well, at least let me refer you to another therapist then. I, I need to do that. No. No more therapists. <laughs> Doctor, I'm not well. <laughs> Helen. See you, Lee, Helen.
April 17th, 1998. Smell of the wet sand. Sound of the sea gentle against the shore. Dead angry. Mum hiding. November 2nd, 2001. She had been waiting for us. Drivers watching us. August 15th, 2009. Going to meet Lee. It suddenly rains. Running up the hill to the station. Everything is right with the world. I'm looking for... Helen? Yeah. She's not here. I've got a bag. Yeah, it's got personal things in it. You like to leave it or not? It's up to you. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe.
You know what bothers me? It's to do with evolution. I don't understand why a creature would evolve with the ability to comprehend the futility of its own existence. It doesn't make sense. Because it isn't the kind of thing that would give you an advantage over your competitors. Are you okay? Well, would you like to uh, talk about it? No. Look, I heard. I heard about Helen. It was on the local news. And um, you were mentioned. As well as Rennie. She had this knowing look. Always to smile. And it was like she could see into the deepest part of your soul. I'm really sorry for you, David. Don't worry. Doesn't this uh, doesn't this affect your practice? <laughs> uh, what was that you were saying about balancing the truth with the absurd? I have no practice, Carl. It's finished. What will you do? Who says I have to do anything? If that's the case, then this is it. It's over. This is the end. Or well, maybe that's what I want. I knew this guy once. We were students together at the UCL. He was brilliant. But he couldn't concentrate for more than about five minutes. And they were an awesome five minutes at that. But then he'd be off chasing a girl or hanging out with his waste of friends. And then he found out he had cancer in his balls and it spread. Now he has a year left and he's sleeping two hours a night, working like a madman. And I said to him, you're crazy, you've got a chance to party or an excuse to party and all you want to do is work. And he said, I don't want to leave this world with a bad reputation.
Hi, yes. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me a bit more about what you do. I suffered all my life with tingle. Tingles! They used to drive me crazy. I tried everything. The doctor says it's all up there. I was imagining it. But it's physical. You don't imagine something physical? Something that's as real as you are. <laughs> what were we saying? Did you ever treat a woman called Helen Jackson? Tingles. I was telling you about the tingles. After a long time. A long time. Years and years. I met a man, he said. Tingles is in your subconscious. And we need to find it. Traumatic memories is living in your mind like a parasite. It could be from this life or another life. We don't know. And that's all I found about the treatment. The treatment? Did this treatment involve making a list of memories? Your parasite, David. You got worms. Worms over the mind. What happened to Helen? What happened to Helen? Yes. We need to find out. Open some doors and look inside. Was she someone close to you? No. You are Helen. But not in this life. Joe bathroom. Careful, eh? Careful. Looking for someone called Pablo?
joke? No, not here. What do you want? I want to know what Helen was involved in. She's not my problem anymore. You made sure of that. But right, it was her choice. Who are you, anyway? Her choice. That's right, her choice. Who the hell are you? A concerned friend. Well, Helen's friend. Please do not bother me anymore. For me, that is all in the past. I'm not gonna let this happen to anyone else. What did she tell you? In a minute. It's all in here. Look. All I wanna know is... You tell that fucking bitch if she or any of her boyfriends bothers me again, I will fucking kill them!
concentration. Mm. Me too. I'm tired. nothing. Okay, I promise, I promise I know how it must have looked and I know what you must be thinking, but really it was just a moment of craziness and I don't know what I was thinking, but look, it's, it's finished. She knows nothing's going to happen. And she knows, you know, I'm totally happy with you. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about what you saw today. What I saw today was daytime TV and some old movies. I've been in bed with the flu. <laughs> Teresa, I saw you and you saw me. I'm telling you, I have not left the house. Maybe it's your conscience playing tricks with you. David, eat. That's Rene. I thought you were going to put him in the park. He doesn't want me to. 
I'm sorry. He doesn't want me to. He told me. When did he tell you? Well, not with words. Not with words? It's stronger than words. We can never be certain what words mean. But with a feeling, then you know. What, what feeling? Where's the feeling come from? I don't need analysis, David. I'm not analyzing you. I'm asking you, was Rene involved in something? Something unusual? Did he ever mention like being part of an organization or something? No. Like a an unusual sounding therapy or self-help group or something? No. What about his things? Erica. What? What about his stuff? When you went through them, did you find any phone numbers or addresses that were unusual? There'll be records. Like, you know, with his, with his mobile phone and his bank details? I don't know. Did you look? No. Nope. I think you should. I think you should ask them. Say that you're tying up his estate and you need to know if you've like, bought anything significant lately. David, no. Why not? It's in the past. You don't want to find out the truth. He was unhappy. That's why he did what he did. I used to say he was wrong. I just want to move on, okay? Can you please allow me to move on? He wants us to call it. It's not a phone number. This life's a mystery. So why shouldn't there be another mystery after it? 
Rene is still here. I can feel him. If I dial this number and get anything other than unrecognized, then... then everything I know about this world is wrong. They didn't want me to tell you. This is not correct. Goodbye. Carl. Carl! Hello? Are you ready? Yes. First contact. 49 Troy Gardens. 30 minutes. Come in. Please. leaving today. Congratulations. You know, I'm jealous. I was hoping to go this year, but uh, so far none of my destinations have been strong enough. Right, let's get you ready. You know you can't take anything with you, right? All you need is your destinations. And don't expect to go to your first choice either. Sometimes it's the place that you least expect. Turns out to be the strongest. What are they for? Security. More yours than theirs. Even I don't know where they send us from. Forget it. But you agreed. I misunderstood. Don't mess them about. It's over. Finished. They don't play games. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Look, don't blow this opportunity, all right? Just go and see how you feel. They won't force you to do anything you don't want to do. But they're not going to wait much longer. Got nothing to lose, right? That's why you're here. Take a seat. Nice place. There's no need to be anxious. And I'm sorry for the delay. There was a breakdown in communication somewhere. Would you? Well, you are here of your own free will. Will you take these off, please? I'm afraid I don't have the authority. Even if I wanted to. Well, then you're breaking the law, right? The law? Or a law? Please. Don't be concerned. Questions will be asked. Someone will give us the answers we're looking for. Then we can get you quickly to your destination. I changed my mind. You do know what that would mean, don't you? I was told I wouldn't be forced to do anything I didn't want to do. Who told you that? Look, I 
don't know you. Anything about you, or this place, or what you're doing. Okay, I could just go. I'm here because I was curious, and I'm not curious anymore, so... Take these fucking things off and let me go. You don't have your destinations. I don't know what destinations are! I don't understand. Take these off, now! Where did you get this number from? Where did you get this number? How did you get a number? Do you realise what we've done? It's a complete breach of patient trust. Damn it, once you put your penis into them. Why don't you just talk to me first? You are a shit liar. And I hate to see you feeling inadequate. I can't keep, I can't keep doing this. I can't live like this. It's okay, David. You can fuck her. Just don't tell me about it.
special thing is, I have met an amazing person. He has showed me a new way to live. Death in this existence is just the beginning of a new existence. And that is your destination too, if you choose it. I hope you can understand why I've made my choice. I love you. Question is, how much damage can I do to your life's work before you can stop me? Anything happens to Erica, and I'll kill you. Yeah, you see, I should have stuck with your original threat, because that doesn't bother me. How do you know I have anything to do with this girl? Whatever her name is. Instinct. I'm learning to use it again. Feels good. What do you know? I know this guy. He's changed everything I know. Everything I know about the universe has been turned on its head. There's a new way now. We're taking the next step. The fuck are you talking about? You know a guy, Carl! People are losing their lives! Your whole concept of life is outdated. How deep into this is she? So much pent up anger. You should be happy. This is her day. What do you mean? She has her destinations. She's leaving. What the fuck do you mean? If you only met this guy... I what guy? To... I swear to God. What guy? Third contact. You were on your way last night. I swear to God, if you just met him. You don't believe in God. Where is she? Too late now. She's probably already gone. Given your understanding of the human mind, you should probably realize how immaturely you're acting.
Erica! Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? No! Stabs the soles on my feet. I find Rene drawing spirals. He tells me about father. I choose not to believe him. We are lost to each other. to do.
I know what you're going through. It's just a matter of time. This is what takes us where we want to go. We call it the bullet. Your memories, they are like the cordite. Two worlds. One with the bullet and one with the empty shell. I don't understand. Why should you? Going some suicide. <laughs> Going some suicide. What is it that you want, David? You must decide. I to go. Are you ready? We need to check if they're strong enough. Read. July 17th, 2003. I don't need to hear it. You are ready. Throw up your sleeve. David, this is the end. Of this life? Yes. I want to go. Seventeenth of January, two thousand and three, North London. A wet winter's day. I hear children playing in the garden next to mine. Soap bubbles float through the air. She is beautiful that evening. We hold each other close until the sun goes down. Her smell intoxicates me. <laughs> 